everyone, my name's Heidi Postel. Welcome back to A Plus Maths. Up until now, we've drawn networks that have had more than one edge being able to connect the same vertices. For example, I could have had A, B and C and I might have drawn two edges connecting B and C. Or I might have had a loop at A connecting these, these different vertices. Now we want to talk about spanning trees. And spanning trees is also just a different way of talking about a network, except it has certain criteria. You are not allowed to have any loops, so we can't have any loops. And we're only allowed to have one edge joining any two vertices. So for example, that wouldn't be allowed. That would not be a spanning tree. We also have another problem in this picture, is that to get from A to C, I could go directly from A to C, or I could get directly from A to B and then B to C. So in actual fact, there are two routes to get from A to C. The one directly, and then the one via B. So that would not be a spanning tree. I would need to remove this edge in order to make it a spanning tree. So, hopefully you're all starting to understand what a spanning tree is. It connects the vertices, but only with one possible path or walk. Let's have a look. So, just to clarify, a spanning tree has our vertices, but there is only one way to get from every vertice to the next one. That you don't have two options, you only have one. If I, for example, put in a line here, that would no longer be a spanning tree because to get from D to B, I would have more than one option. So he's not allowed to be there for this network to be a spanning tree. And you can have pictures like this as well. Again, there's only one route to get to every vertex and that's what makes it a spanning tree. You may or may not have noticed, I don't think anybody would notice it on their own, that when you have a spanning tree, there is a relationship between the vertices and the edges. Let's see if we can work it out. Here I have one, two, three, four vertices. And how many edges do I have? One, two, three. Three edges. Let's have a look over here. I have one, two, three, four, five vertices. And how many edges? One, two, three, four. Four edges. Some of you may realise that because we never ever join the last point up with anything else, otherwise there would be more than one route to get from two of the vertices, there will always need to be one less edge than vertex. So we have a little rule that says that the number of edges will equal the number of vertices minus one. And that should always work with a spanning tree. And that little rule is going to help us when we're not just asked, is this a spanning tree? We might be asked, like over here, what do I need to do to make this network graph into a spanning tree? Or it might ask you, how many edges do you need to remove to make this graph a spanning tree? Well, let's investigate that. We know that we have one, two, three, four, five, six vertices. And at the moment we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight edges. But if we want to make this network graph into a spanning tree. We need our spanning tree, and I'll draw a completely separate diagram. I find it very confusing to use the same picture. I like to just redraw it the best that I can. A, B, C, D, E, and S. I need to think now about what my rules are for spanning trees. So for a spanning tree, I need the edges to equal the vertices minus one. Now the vertices I can't change. 
I can't change the corners. The corners have to still be there. Somehow I need to connect those corners with how many edges? One less edge than vertices. So if I have one, two, three, four, five, six vertices, I need this to be five edges. That's what I need it to be to make my spanning tree. So I need to remove three edges. That's what I need to do in order to make this a spanning tree. Which three edges do you think I might be able to move? Well, there might be lots of different options here. So let's just have a go. I might want to keep this one. And then I'm going to keep that one. Two, that's three, four, five. There we go. That's a spanning tree. And there would be many options for your spanning tree. You might have chosen a completely different option to me. And that would be correct. As long as it follows the rules of one less edge than vertice. So you should have six vertices, five edges, and every one of these vertices should be connected to another vertice. You should not have an isolated vertex. You remember what an isolated vertex was? We did it in the first video. It was just a vertex sitting on its own, not connected to anything. I'd like to just have a look at one more to make sure that everybody gets it, because it's quite confusing all these different terms and terminologies. Here I have a network graph. And I need to make it into a spanning tree. So I need to work out how many edges I need to remove to make it into a spanning tree so that every vertice is connected to one other. Now I like to draw it again, remember? A, B, C, D and E. Let's think about how many vertices and edges I have to start with. For five vertices. And how many edges? One, two, three, four, five, six edges. So how many do I need for my spanning tree? I still have to keep my five vertices. Remember the rule? Edges equals vertices minus one. So I need to have four edges. That's the rule for a spanning tree. I don't have to go why or how, that's the rule. So I now know that I need to connect all of these vertices up somehow using these lines that are already there, but with four edges. So I can go one, two, three, and, well, I might just do four. And that would become my spanning tree. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe below. See you next time.